erythema multiform an acute self limiting hypersensitivity reaction common in young adults aged 20 to 30 years with a slight male predilection characterized by target iris bullseye lesion on skin and crusting hemorrhagic oral lesions Types include erythema multiform minor that results in target cutaneous lesion along with only one mucosal site that could be involved. Whereas in erythema multiform major there are two or more mucosal sites involved that includes oral cavity, eye, genitalia, esophagus and respiratory tract to name a few. Erythema multiform minor prodromal symptoms like fever, malaise, headache, cough, sore throat are experienced approximately one week before the onset of the cutaneous and mucosal lesions. Erythema multiform minor is mostly triggered by infectious agents like herpes simplex virus and mycoplasma pneumonia. Characteristic target iris bullseye cutaneous lesions are formed. Mucosal sites are rarely involved, but if any mucosal site is involved, it could be the oral cavity. Erythema multiform major, mostly triggered by medications like sulfonamides, barbiturates, and anticonvulsants like phenytoin. In erythema multiform major, there are numerous target iris bullseye cutaneous lesions that are formed along with two or more mucosal sites involved. There are characteristic crusting hemorrhagic ulcerated lesions in the oral cavity, while other mucosal sites that could be involved include eye, genitalia, esophagus, and the respiratory tract. As we all know, the triggers include drugs like sulfonamides, NSAIDs, barbiturates, and anticonvulsants like phenytoin, along with infectious agents like herpes simplex virus, histoplasmosis, and mycoplasma. The triggers causes lymphocytic and macrophage recruitment that results in basal and parabasal cell apoptosis and a characteristic vasculitis, along with lymphocytic infiltrate in the perivascular space. Histopathology reveals epithelial hyperplasia, basal, parabasal, apoptotic keratinocytes, subepithelial vesicles are observed while intraepithelial vesicles may also be seen spongiosis and a lymphocyte macrophage infiltrate in the perivascular space and the connective tissue papilla. The diagnosis is based mainly on the clinical outlook of the patient, the histopathology report and the direct immunofluorescence report that reveals IgM complement and fibrin deposits in the vessel walls. Treatment includes use of topical corticosteroids, antifungals to prevent any secondary infections and acyclovir 400 to 600 mg daily effective in preventing recurrences in patients who have herpes simplex virus triggered disease. Supportive remedies include use of mild mouthwashes, discontinuing use of any medication that triggers the disease and IV rehydration along with topical anesthetic agents in patients suffering from dehydration due to pain and inability to eat and drink. Ending with a hope that it helped you in one way or another.